Do the Oilers have one of the most stacked top six in the NHL? And what does that group look like? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to the Sports Analyst. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Today's video is an interesting deep dive into the lines of the Edmonton Oilers and what a talented team this might be next season. They've made numerous additions to the squad over the past couple years, and this year we're seeing the new addition being Dominic Cahoon, as well as adding Tyler Ennis back to the fold, of course re-signed, as well as Kyle Turris, among others. So there have certainly been additions to this squad. We know over the past couple years, Kaylor Yamamoto coming in, of course, uh, Ethan Bear, Caleb Jones getting more time. You might see Evan Bouchard make it in this year as well. Tyson Berry coming in, of course. Mike Smith re-signing. And Jesse Poyarvi signing with the Oilers once again. So, so much movement with this team. Also some potential rookies and prospects that might make the squad this year. So I want to break down what does their left, center, and right wing look like? What does that defense look like? We really know what the goalies are going to be. It's going to be, of course, Koskinen and Smith. And obviously Olivier Rodrigue, among others, will be there to take that next step in the next couple of seasons. But we know the goalie spot is pretty much secured, a 1A, 1B type situation. Both had positives and negatives last year. Of course, Koskinen brings great size. But I want to focus on the defense. Has that defense improved as they've needed? And does that offense now have some lethal offensive capabilities, even more so than it did before? Of course, having that one-two punch of McDavid, Dreisaitl, whether down the middle or on the wing. So if this sounds interesting to you, of course, watch for more content. Subscribe if you're enjoying this channel. Comment below your thoughts. Don't forget to check out my football videos if you haven't yet, uh, as well as a recent hockey video that we did. So much content uh, that's been put out recently. Make sure to look out for those things. So let's get right into it. So obviously we know that the second line was the big fixture of Edmonton later in the season. And I mention this because we saw a group that had Leon Dreisaitl, Kyler Yamamoto being such an amazing duo. And of course, Tyler Ennis coming in there as well. But what a duo that was. And obviously, McDavid, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, we know that works. But the question was, is there a piece that can also work with Dreisaitl to keep him as that second line center and have another effective line rotating, potentially even allowing for a third line to be effective with someone like James Neal? And so by seeing that, we saw so much progression this year, allowing the Oilers to really build a successful top six that they haven't had in quite a long time. Obviously, Connor McDavid leads the team as that number one center, 64 games played this year, 34 goals, 63 assists, 97 points. But Dreisaitl obviously led the team in all points, 110 points, 71 games, 43 goals, 67 assists. Keep in mind, last year he had 50 goals. And so there's so much potential there. When you add in someone like Kyler Yamamoto next to Leon Dreisaitl, it truly is, guys, the limit. Now, Yamamoto only had 27 games played with Dreisaitl last year. Of course, uh, prior to that, he was with the Condors in the AHL. But coming up made an immediate impact, almost point per game, 11 goals, 15 assists, 26 points in those 27 games. What an impact Kyler Yamamoto made. And what we know about Yamamoto is that he's such a speedster, such a shifty player, great skill, great skating, and this is what you need. I just did a video a couple days ago focusing on what does someone like Lucas Raymond need to do to succeed at the next level, and what Raymond needs is he needs to continue to build on amazing skating, and we see this so often with players that don't have 6'4", 6'5", frames, or even 6'2", frames, but when they're sub six foot, what they need is amazing speed, great skating, great mobility, and we're seeing the game more and more transition to players like that because speed is what's winning the game and it's not more physicality. So if you haven't seen that Lucas Raymond video, of course, check that one out. So let's take a look at this top six in more depth. Obviously, Conor McDavid's going to be that number one center, Leon Dreisaitl number two, no questions there. But what this allows the Oilers to do is keep Ryan Nugent Hopkins as that first line left winger because they now have Kyle Turris, and it really allows them to open up the ice a bit more here. Kyle Turris for Nashville wasn't a great fit. 62 games played this past season, obviously was there three years from that Ottawa trade involving Matt Duchesne. Nine goals, 22 assists, 31 points. Kyle Turris should be able to provide a very nice physical presence. I tend to think he would do similarly to someone like Ryan Strom did for Edmonton. Obviously, Strom has exploded in a great way for the Rangers, 
But what he did for the Oilers was really provide consistency in that third line role, some physicality, some two way ability, and overall not relied too heavily on the offense because there are better centers on the team. And so that is what Kyle Turris is expected to do play at that same level. But he's going to have the line mates, in my opinion, of James Neal, because it's going to provide him a power forward, some goal scoring, consistency. And that is what his, uh, Turris is going to be able to do very well with being a decent passer, to have someone like that who can be that consistent goal scorer. Obviously, James Neal this past year started off very hot, 19 goals to finish the season, but most of those coming in the beginning of the season, ending up with 31 points total. So James Neal, fairly inconsistent in what he does in terms of scoring, but we know that output in the long term will be a consistent one. So I think with Turris, that'll be a nice fit. And then Tyler Ennis, I think, it really depends what that chemistry is. We could easily see Ennis shift second line once again with Drysaddle Yamamoto because what a speedster line that is. Now, I do think the question is Yamamoto uh, Ennis are both, as we would say, undersized. And so do they want to have a full undersized line there aside from Drysaddle? You might see that. But I think if you add in Dominic Cahoon there, this might be a better off-tempo type player. 56 games played last year between Pittsburgh as well as Buffalo. 12 goals, 19 assists, 31 points. Previously playing with Chicago the year before. And I think Cahoon is someone that could easily eclipse 15 to 20 goals, 40 points if he's on an effective line. And what we've seen is McDavid can make players that are average players look tremendously good. We saw this with James Neal when he was clicking at the beginning of the year. We saw this with Patrick Maroon a couple years ago. And so Dominic Cahoon might do very well with Leon Dreisaitl, Kyler Yamamoto. I would not be surprised to see 20 goals there, 40 points. I'd be calling that right now. And I think he's going to play that second line role, Dreisaitl Yamamoto. And that will allow Ennis to shift third line with two players that are a bit slower in Turris and Neal. Ennis will provide some speed there. I think that'll be a nice fit for him. If that line becomes too physical, however, I think Ennis will end up being someone that we're not going to see much of. He's going to become a bit distant, and that's obviously what we saw in Buffalo. That's what we saw in Minnesota with Ennis. But he was really succeeding in Ottawa last year because he was relied on in the top six role. And then coming over to the Oilers had a similar effect. 70 games played total between the two franchises. 16 goals, 21 assists, 37 points. Yet another one, I think, like Cahoon, it could be 20 goals, 40 points. And so if you have him top six, you're going to see that output. I don't necessarily think you're going to see that in the third line role. I think Cahoon, you would. So it's going to be a shift between those two, but that's what I think is going to happen. Top line, of course, Ryan Nugent Hopkins with McDavid. Nugent Hopkins last year, 61 points in 65 games, nearly close to point per game, consistently getting better as someone who is a left winger, obviously a natural center, but he's doing everything he can to make the Edmonton Oilers a better team and doing what it takes. And that's a true team player right there. I think Nugent Hopkins is very underrated in what he does there in terms of leadership abilities. 22 goals, 39 assists, very capable with McDavid. And this is where it comes interesting because you have Yamamoto and you have Jesse Poyarvi. Obviously, Poyarvi being drafted fourth overall, you would expect him to perform at a high level. Uh, when you had someone like Pelu Dubois go third, you want someone to be able to put up nearly to that level, especially when PRV was expected by everyone to go number third, number three. And so Pujarvi is going to get every opportunity to play with McDavid. And I think some people would say he needs to earn his ice time, but we already saw him do that in Edmonton once and it failed. We saw him work on that third line, it didn't work. We saw him try to move up to the second line, it didn't work. And he wasn't even clicking with McDavid briefly. And now Yamamoto has come in as that top right wing, no doubt there. But when you have Yamamoto, who has amazing chemistry with Leon Dreisaitl, and then could continue to build that with Ennis or Adam Cahoon, you really want to shift in Poyarvi somewhere that is going to be a scoring-capable place. And while you could do that with Turris and Ennis, Turris is not someone that can drive his own line. We've seen that the past three years in Nashville. He's not someone that can drive his own line. Ennis is someone who is a very good complementary player, but he's not someone that can once again drive his own line or even score without someone who is a high-level player unless he's getting consistent and high amounts of ice time like we saw in Ottawa. He'll get that point share. And so I think Poyarvi is not going to succeed in that third-line role, whereas Neil might. And so then the question becomes, is he going to be a fourth-liner or a first-liner? No doubt you would not make him a fourth-liner. He's not a physical player. You already have Zach Cassian, who's doing a great job there. Of course, Cassian, 59 games played, 15 goals, 19 assists, 34 points. Cassian doing a great job in what he's doing. Very chippy, a lot of penalty minutes, a lot of physicality, but really chipping in offensively despite having a bottom six role, doing a great job there. And I think you could see him shift to that third line, take out Neil there if Neil's not succeeding. And so I do think 
Puyarvi's going to end up being with Nugent Hopkins and McDavid on that top line. I think a lot of people would say Yamamoto deserves that spot, and no doubt he does. But when you have this dry settle Yamamoto connection that has so much chemistry between the two, it's not something that you want to break up. It's not about who has more ice time. It's about winning games, and the Oilers understand that, hopefully, and they're going to put Puyarvi first line with Nugent Hopkins McDavid. Now, if he is struggling, then this is when you need to make changes, and I think you would either shift Neil up to McDavid because they had worked prior, then you shift Cassian maybe to Turris if needed, put Puyarvi down there, shift Yamamoto if you have to. There are options. But I think if you don't first consider the McDavid Puyarvi option, you're really doing a disservice to the Oilers team. And when you want a team finally making the playoffs, finally getting successful, it's not about having a down year. And if you're going to bring in Puyarvi, if you're going to take on that risk, then you need to do more than just give him a practice run. You need to go full out and do what it takes. Now, obviously, this past year in Liga, he proved he is a very good player. 56 games played, 24 goals, 29 assists, 53 points. Puyarvi knows what it takes to win. The fact is, can he create chemistry with players? Can he get over some personal issues that he needs in terms of getting ice time, being successful? But if this can all click together, he could be an amazing player with McDavid. It might not be a good team fit, but the fact that he's willing to come back to Edmonton, the fact that Edmonton wants him back, this is what it takes. And you have to make that consistent effort to bring him back. I think it's very possible. And so when you see a top six that... Uh, includes all these players that I mentioned, and they include the, the third line. What does that fourth line leave us? Now, we said Zach Cassian. The center spot's where it becomes interesting. Obviously, you could have Korea there. That's where he's been the past couple years. But then you mentioned some young guys here, Ryan McLeod and then Raphael Lavoie. Where do they line up here? Of course, Lavoie was 38th overall pick 2019. Ryan McLeod, 40th pick 2018. His brother, Michael McLeod, hasn't done too much for the Devils yet, but Ryan is considered even more so the speedster. Last year for the AHL Condors, 56 games played, 5 goals, 18 assists, 23 points. I think he does need more time to round out his game. Right now playing in the Swiss League as is Lavoie. Doing a decent uh, job there. I think he can continue to get better at what he's doing, needs to do so. Now, in terms of Lavoie, he is 55 games played, 38 goals, 44 assists, 82 points. In the uh, QMJHL last year, after a trade midseason, very successful season. I don't think playing either of them in a fourth-line role is going to be successful for them because they are two young players that are capable of top nine minutes. I think Lavoie could handle a third-line role with more physicality, but I think McLeod needs someone that he can be a speedster, and I think he needs to get where Cahoon is on that second-line left wing if, that, if he's going to succeed. I don't see that happening, especially with Kyle Turris coming in, solidifying the third-line center spot. So I think realistically, the third line will see Korea Cassian but the fourth left wing is where the actual consideration is, the actual battle of who's making the team. And this one I'm not so sure here. You could see Alex Tyson take that spot. 65 games played, 11 goals, 13 assists, 24 points. But honestly, I'm putting my money here on Tyler Benson. AHL, last year, 47 games played, 9 goals, 27 assists, 36 points. Now those numbers may not wow you, but the year before that, 68 games played, 15 goals, 51 assists, 66 points. What an amazing season. 32nd overall pick in 2016. This is someone that may not be overly defensive, may not be over uh, great in the two-way game, but this is someone that brings in good speed, good skating, but amazing passing. And this is a team that has some lethal scorers. Dreisaitl, we have seen be a lethal scorer. 50 goals, like I said, just a couple years ago. McDavid, even with as amazing as his passing is, when you're getting in those 30s, 35s in goal scoring, you know he's capable of it. Yamamoto, Puyarvi coming in as more goal scorers. Obviously, pass your speed service, but they can do that. These are where goals are coming. Ennis, Neil Castian, goal scorers. And so if you can add someone that is an elite, high-level passer, like Tyler Benson, that plays with a nose to the net, I think that's going to be amazing to try and create four offensive lines, obviously more of a defensive physical presence on those bottom two lines, but to continue the offensive presence, and this is what we saw with Zach Cassian, continuing the offensive abilities even though he's being shifted in a bottom six role. Obviously, Cassian did get time with McDavid and Dreisaitl, and that's why he was succeeding at a high level, but still able to do that at a low level. This is what you expect. And so, I think Tyler Benson is going to make a real case to make the Oilers lineup. And it's going to be tough to see where he shifts in with this because I don't think he's going to take out anyone in that top six. I think Cahoon might be the only one that there'd be a chance, but I don't think Benson is ready for that. And this to show that he's ready to compete at a high level. Unless Neil really falters, I don't think Benson takes his spot. Especially Benson is a left winger, so there isn't too much depth there for him to move up. 
But I think getting a fourth line spot, giving him some more ice time, shifting him in is what it's going to take to make him a successful player. I would put my money there on Benson making the team at that spot. Now, I do want to look at the defense. Obviously, we've talked for years about the Edmonton Oilers having a lack of defensive talent. And we know they have two primary defensive prospects, Evan Bouchard, someone who I consider NHL ready and have for the past couple years. The question is, his defensive game still needs to get developed, but he is a leader. We saw that all the way back in his time in the OHL. But we also know that he is someone that can be an effective passer. And we saw this when he played uh, with the London Knights, with Ole Levy, and of course, Adam Boquist also got some time at that team. Uh, obviously, though, not with his squad. Uh, Philip Broberg, though, is that other defensive talent. And so when you have Broberg and Bouchard as two defensive talents, Broberg obviously is someone that's very high risk, high reward, as is Bouchard. It could work out or it couldn't, but at this point, I want to see Bouchard make the team. I want to see him play at least some amount of games. We saw Rasmus Sandin being shifted in for the Leafs. Timothy Lilligren should be getting his spot soon. At some point, you've got to give him a chance to see if they're ready. And if they're not, you got to move on at some point. This is obviously a very high-end player, as is Broberg. You want to give them time, make the team. And with a team that is having defensive struggles, it's very possible. But the question is, where does he shift into this group? And this is where it gets tough. And so, Evan Bouchard last year, AHL, 54 games played, 7 goals, 29 assists, 36 points. Not a horrible showing. 10th overall pick, 2018. Someone who's a true minute muncher and was considered NHL-ready, possibly, at his NHL draft. But, like I said, the defensive gaps is they are there. You can look at his scouting report. I did on him a couple years ago. It's still there. Interesting uh, to watch it once again from this point. But what the Oilers brought in that's going to help offensively is Tyson Berry. And Tyson Berry does have numerous defensive gap issues. And so if you're already dealing with a player that has defensive gap issues, I don't see the Oilers bringing in Evan Bouchard to play at a significant amount of minutes when you already have someone that could be a liability in that way. Now, when you see Adam Larson, whose offensive capabilities more or less disappeared last year, one goal, five assists, six points in 49 games, 1950, uh, 1950 was the time on ice. So he's getting a lot of opportunities, but he's not making it happen. A lot of rumors speculating that he's going to be a trade asset. If Adam Larson does leave the team, obviously came from the Taylor Hall deal, Evan Bouchard, I think, will slide up to that spot. But at this point, I think Adam Larson is still someone who's going to be in the team as a defensive player, even if that offense just isn't there. Chris Russell is someone that I think could slide out for Bouchard. 55 games played, only 9 assists, no goals, 16-47 time on ice. Obviously, a lot of injury issues. He's an older player. I don't see Chris Russell making the team. I think uh, more than likely he's either going to get released, traded, or just be a scratch. And so I do think Evan Bouchard has a chance at that spot. What I think is going to be a consistent top four though and I don't see much uh, breakage between who's making it and who isn't is Darnell Nurse, Ethan Bear, Caleb Jones and then really Tyson Berry because they brought in Tyson Berry no doubt they're not going to move him they already know his offensive capabilities you know that there are some liability issues but when Ethan Bear is someone that really could uh, have a, a boomer bust year this year really take it off 21-58 time on ice. I think he's someone that's really going to take off as a number two defender for this team. 21 points, five goals last year. As we saw, Darnell Nurse, who's been the number one, 23-27 time on ice. 71 games played, five goals, 33 points. That's going to be your consistent one-two next year moving forward. Nurse Bear, no doubt there. Caleb Jones finally has an opportunity to really become uh, a top four defender for the team. Only 14-08 last year time on ice. So I do think this is... Uh, a bit of a high projection to make him as a number three, number four. But given Larson's struggles, given Chris Russell's age, injury issues, and given how Barry does have defensive gap issues, I do think Caleb Jones is uh, very high likely to get a top four role in that second line spot. And so I think he'll play with Adam Larson. I think if that doesn't happen, though, expect Tyson Berry to slide up and play with Larson. It'll allow some defensive abilities on Larson's end to work with Tyson Berry's doing offensively. And then that sixth line could be two young players, Evan Bouchard, Caleb Jones. Currently, I do have Evan Bouchard penciled in as making the team. I think uh, it would be an interesting power play to see Bouchard play with Barry. But I do think you might see some shorthanded goals scored on that unit if they're having these gaps. But I do think this could be a very high-end offensive unit on that power play, especially imagining if guys like McDavid, Dreisaitl, Yamamoto, especially if Poyarvi is doing well, even James Neal or Tyler Ennis are all on that offensive power play. This could be a very talented unit. I'd love to see what happens with this. And so I do think 
this is what the overall lines are looking for the Oilers. If I had to say what I think needs to be improved on this system, I think defensively, I still want to see someone that can be a rock solid defender, both offensively and defensively. Darnell Nurse certainly isn't a bad defender, but he's not taking off at 50 points, and I think a lot of teams do have a number one defender that does that. And so can the Oilers build their team without someone that is that type of number one defender? Obviously, Nurse is very capable, not doubting that at all, but he's a different type of player. When you see a lot of teams build with a, with a Morgan Riley or even a Ryan Suter's defensive and offensive, or even what Florida's doing with Ekblad and Yandel, you see a lot of teams that are building around someone that is offensive and defensive, and usually not just someone who's a 30-point player and also defensive. You see the wild of someone like Jonas Brodin, who could easily do that amount of points, very good defensive, but he's also shifted to that second line sometimes, depending if Suter's playing Spurge and then obviously Dumba's there. So what a talented group there. So I think to have Nurses at number one might be a little bit tough to build long-term with because I do think there are some limitations there in terms of high-end potential. I think Broberg and Bouchard had that potential. But the issue is uh, Caleb Jones, to some extent, is more of an offensive player than a defensive player, but does have some good defensive abilities there. Bear, I think, is going to be a very consistent one. Don't see number one upside, but I do see number two. I think he can definitely be there. Larson, some issues there trending downwards. Not sure what to think of that one. Might be a trade issue there. But Bouchard, Barry, Broberg are all offensive defenders, and so I do think you need to focus defensively. If the Oilers can't figure it out coming into this next draft, <clears throat> obviously some very good defensive players in this draft, whether that's Owen Power, whether that's Luke Hughes, so many talented players this draft. So comment below your thoughts. What do you think of the Oilers system? I think offensively, it is such a talented team. Goaltending is going to be consistent like last season, some ups, some downs. Defensively, I think overall is going to be a decent group, more offensive. But I do think there will be some issues, as there always have been. But I do expect a lot of improvement from Caleb Jones, Ethan Bear this year. Hopefully Adam Larson as well. So comment below your thoughts. What do you think about the Oilers system? What do you think about what they need to do to get back to the playoffs, be a successful team, potentially even challenge for a president-type trophy with the way that they score? Comment below your thoughts, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.